Hi and welcome to another very cool tutorial. Today we are going to explore the possibilities of closures and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to write our own completion blocks which will enable us to create this cool app called Flickr, Cool Flickr Search. And what it does is pretty simple actually. You can enter a search term um, like I did here, Apple Store, uh, click search and um, according to the spinning wheel you can see that it is loading, it's doing something in the background and it um, loads actually 20 um, images from Flickr using the Flickr API and um, by, we choose then um, randomly one of these um, 20 images that is that are returned from the um, from the Flickr database and when we change this to let's say let's look for a cool flower search for image and then we get one random image of a more or less flower let's do this again and there we have a pretty flower um, and that's what we are going to do so we will um, um, we will basically explore the way of um, of creating a completion block or a completion closure and doing this uh, ourselves and we will use this um, within a um, within a helper class which we'll then use to create um, this demo project which is only the first step in the next tutorial we will um, explore the possibilities of the UI collection view to display more than one image um, so let's get started. But before I forget, uh, make sure that you create your own API key for this app. Um, just do a Google search for Flickr API key and you uh, will get to this um, to this location and um, then log in with a um, Yahoo ID or create one and apply for this uh, for this key. You just have to enter a um, an app name and a uh, and a description um, and if you're interested to do more using the Flickr API it's worth uh, taking a look at the uh, API documentation which is great um, so we will use the um, REST API and um, use the JSON as a response format and this will make it really really easy to, um, to achieve uh, this cool little demo application uh, so let's get right started and create a new um, Xcode project. Um, and we're going to create a, a single view application. We'll call it um, Flickr Viewer or whatever. Um, use Swift as our language, hit next and just save it. Well, and um, as I told you before, we are going to create a helper class which will help us to um, to use the Flickr API and also um, this helper class will be used in the next tutorial to um, to to populate the collection view that I told you about. But for now, let's just um, keep it with this simple demo application. We'll just click on the view controller here, create a new Cocoa Touch class by pressing Command N. Um, and this is actually going to be a subclass of NS object since we will not ne uh, need any um, UI kit uh, stuff in this in this helper class and we'll let's just call it Flickr helper and create and all we have to do now is write some very basic um, very basic functions here and to make it a little easier let's use class functions um, class functions are great if you want to um, if you want to call a function without creating a instance or an object of, of a specific class like uh, Flickr helper and we will start with a class function called URL for search string uh, which will give us actually the um, the URL that we're going to need um, to call the Flickr API um, with some uh, with some basic stuff like the API key and the actual search term. So we will have to define a search string as a parameter, which is going to be a string, and a return type of this function is going to be a string as well. And what we're going to do is um, first store the API key, which is also a string, 
And as I told you, just use your own API key here. I'm going to copy and paste mine right now into, into this uh, into the string here. And what we also need to do is define a um, is the search string again, because what we want to do is taking the search string parameter and um, to make sure that this call is going to work, we're calling the string by adding percent um, percent escapes using encoding, um, which will make it possible to filter the um, the given string by the user and check if there is, um, a, let's say, a backslash n or whatever included in the um, included in the in the search string. So let's use the um, NSUTF8 string encoding and as utf8 string encoding which is actually the standard which you can almost use every time you use string encoding and then let's just return a string that i already prepared um, this must be a secured http um, string which will, means that you have to append an s to the http this https um, connection and this is actually the uh, url for the rest api that we have to call and all we need to insert actually is the api key which we have here so we use the um, Swift syntax to con uh, concatenate this string and also we insert the search term and we return the string and that's actually all there is to this uh, to this first function and what we're also going to do is creating a URL for a specific Flickr photo but before we're going to do that let's create another class which is going to be called Flickr Flickr photo and we're using this class to um, to help us storing all the necessary information we are going to need to load um, for this and the next tutorial. So let's start with a basic thumbnail image, which is going to be a UI, a UI image. Let's also prepare a large image, which is also going to be a UI image. And what we're actually going to need are um, four things and you're going to see later why we really need them um, to load um, to load one photo we need a photo id which is going to be a string uh, we will need a um, something called farm this must have something to do with the Flickr server farms and um, this ID of the farm actually helps us to build the correct URL to the to the image we are going to download. Um, <clears throat> this is can be an integer, and we are also going to need a specific server which will use um, a string as data type because I had some problems using integer here as well as with the secret. So also going to use a string here. Um, and what we also have to do is create um, an initializer. So let's say override um, init and just build that. And now we have created this uh, this photo uh, Flickr photo class, which does not need any additional uh, logic, just those properties that we are going to use later. Um, so what we are now going to do is uh, back again in the Flickr helper class, and we will again create a class function, um, which is called URL for Flickr photo. Um, and now we're going to need this class that we just created by cre by using it for um, as a parameter. Um, the photo parameter of this Flickr photo class, as well as a size, um, which we can define as string and the return type is again a string uh, for the URL that we're going to create. So um, let's just say that we have a another variable size, which is also a string and um, put in the parameter from this class because we want to change this now because when size is empty, we want to say that the size is going to be medium with uh, with an M. Um, this is actually um, 
to use an M is prescribed by Flickr. So um, if you want to know more about image sizes and so on, just read it in the uh, Flickr API documentation. And now we are going to return another string, um, which uses um, this syntax. We have a farm. We get the. F we will. Uh, we have to find a property for the farm. Um, we want a server slash a photo ID underscore a secret underscore a size dot JPEG, and this is actually how um, Flickr stores its um, its images. So we can access them by just returning um, this string to another function that we're going to create now. So let's write a function um, that will take the main logic of our program and of our helper class, actually. Um, we will call this function um, search flicker for string. And actually what we need is a search string, which we'll call search string, which is going to be a string. And now we're actually getting to the interesting part where the completion handler or the completion closure um, comes in. Actually, when we're talking about closures, so let me just talk about closures a little bit. Um, when we are talking about closure, uh, closures, actually every time you use a function, you use closures because every, every function is just a special type of closure. So you could also actually define a variable called um, um, equation or uh, let's just call it EQ um, and open and close some, uh, some uh, curly braces. And if we say this equation is going to be of a type of bool, uh, then we can just return um, let's say if two um, is greater than one, then let's say yes, that's that's actually true. So let's return true. And if uh, and let's just say else return false. So this is actually uh, this is a very basic. Um, a, a very basic closure, and as you can see, um, this will never be executed because two is always greater than one, so this else is never um, is never called. Maybe a bad example, um, but as you can see, you could do a lot of things using this kind um, of closure to just give the variable you're working with a specific value. Um, uh, depending on some other sources, other variables, or whatever. Um, and actually what we are going to do uh, with our completion block is also a type of closure, a completion clo a closure that is called um, when we actually call it. So we can tell this function um, when it is completed actually, and that's really cool. Um, and I would I would say that is it is equally important to know how to write completion closures um, as it is to know how to define um, your custom delegates to transfer data around. Um, there's also a tutorial for that. Um, so let's continue with our search flicker for string function um, by by creating this completion block. So uh, completion closure. So let's say we call it completion. Um, and what we have to do now is defining the parameters that we can later access when we have called the search flicker for a string function. Um, and there we give our function, uh, the completion closure, the parameters that we can use to, um, to work with the data that is retrieved here from Flickr. So the first thing that we might want to use again is the search string. So this is going to be a string. What we also um, want to use is um, Flickr photos, um, which are an array of, um, of Flickr photos of our class Flickr photo. Um, so let's say this is going to be, let's say an NS mutable array, also unread this. And we want to use an NS error to make sure that if there is an error that we can detect it and uh, properly react to this error by uh, giving, uh, giving, uh, giving an error message to the user or um, uh, just for debu debugging purposes. So um, this is actually all you have to do to define the closure. Now you have to um, give this a return type, which is uh, which we don't have, but 
you have to define it. Um, and that's it actually. Now we can put another uh, parentheses around here and open our uh, curly braces. And as you can see, build succeeded. And now we can later use, um, just use completion, completion. Um, and as you can see, we can call this completion block and pass in the parameters um, that we want to use later. Um, but that's not, but we're getting to that in a second. So let's first begin with the uh, basic logic of, um, of this function. And we will first need a search URL um, for our photos. And this is going to be a string. And we will now call the Flickr helper, which is the class that we are um, we are in right now. And as I told you, we can just say URL for search string without creating uh, an object of this class, Flickr helper, because we have defined this as a class function. So um, we will just pass in the search string here. Um, and we will now continue to create a queue, a dispatch queue, uh, dispatch QT, um, which we have to use because we are going to download a lot of data from Flickr. And if we would do that on the main thread, um, which is actually where all the stuff runs by default, then we would kind of freeze the app and um, something like that uh, might not be possible so that this in activity indicator really spins without uh, looking like um, uh, looking like a snail. So um, we, we create this, this patch queue and assign um, the, the global queue to it. So this patch um, global Q, um, and we give it an identifier, which will um, define the priority of this queue by saying dispatch uh, underscore Q and the priority default with a flag of zero. And now we will dispatch asynchronously our queue. So everything that we're going to do now is going to happen asynchronously to the main thread. So let's put in our queue here and open a closure here using curly braces. And all what we're going to write now between um, those curly, uh, curly braces um, is going to happen asynchronously to the main thread. So first, we want to create an error which is of type NS error, and this needs to be optional because it actually should always be nil. We don't want to happen. Uh, we won't, don't want an error to happen, but if it does, it's not going to be nil. Um, so we can check for that. And uh, before we get an error, we have to do something, and we want now a search result string, which is a string. Unwrap this directly. Um, and don't and not don't unwrap and make it um, not optional, and um, we will call the string with contents of URL uh, function to pass in the URL that we just received. Um, this is actually a string, so we have to convert it to an URL using nsurl um, dot URL with string and just pass in the search. Um, the search string, uh, not the search string, the search URL. Um, and we're again using NS UTF-8 string encoding. And now we have to put in the address of our error. And now we can check if the error is not equal nil. So if there was an error at this point by getting this uh, string with contents of URL, then we have to call our completion handler the first time. So let's say completion. Um, and now let's fill in the parameters. So the search string is known. This is search str. The Flickr photos are not available yet because we haven't downloaded anything yet. So let's put a nil to here. And um, the error actually just happened. So let's um, let's bring the error into this parameter list here. Um, and that's actually the first time we call the completion of our function. So. If there was no error, we can continue. So else, what do you what what is the next step we want to do? We will get a report um, uh, a um, response as JSON, and what this is going to look like is actually something like this. Um, and we have to parse this JSON response, and what we get here is a dictionary. 
um, of photos and within this dictionary there this there is a key page pages uh, per page what uh, whatsoever and within this photos dictionary there's also this photo dictionary which actually um, has all the keys that we're going to need and maybe you remember from the Flickr photo class we um, we're going to have the farm where the photo is located we have the ID uh, we have a secret we have the server and we also could use the title which we did not at the moment so uh, let's parse the JSON response and let's first get the data so say JSON data and as data um, which is not optional um, and now let's use the search result string data using encoding and again we're going to use NSUTF8 string encoding and do not allow lossy conversions a conversion so let's say false here and now we will get a dictionary out of that. So let's say um, result dictionary, it's going to be an NS dictionary, also non-optional. And now we can use a great class called NSJSON serialization um, to call JSON object with data. And we have a data, JSON data object here. Uh, we don't need any options, so let's just say nil. And again, here, as a, at this point, another error could occur, so let's just put in our error um, object here and convert that uh, cast set to an NS dictionary. So, again, we could experience an error here, so let's check for it uh, by asking if error is not equal to nil. So, if there was an error, again, we will call our completion handler. Um, the search string, again, is known as search string. We don't have Flickr photos yet, but again, there was this error. And if there was no error, we can continue in the else block. And um, now the first thing we want is checking for the status that we could get uh, from the Flickr API. So let's say there is a status called, uh, this, this is a string, and if we say result dictionary object for key, um, stat as string, um, then we can check if status is equal to fail. This is what you get when you um, when you call the Flickr API and something ran, went wrong, then you will get um, this dictionary with a key called stat, and if this stat is going to, and the object within stat for the key stat is going to be fail then again we have to um we have to create an error now ourselves um so let's say error and as error which always has to be um optional in this case um and we will use the and as error with this constructor so the string is going to be flicker search the code zero and now we can um, just create uh, a dictionary with the with the error by saying Anna's localized this uh, localized failure reason error key and the um, and the reason we can get from the um, uh, from the result dictionary if we um, ask for the object for the key message. All right, and now we can again call our completion block, uh, our completion closure, and again we can pass in the search string. We don't have Flickr photos yet, and now we can just say there is our error here. Um, all right, now if there was no error at this point, we can again open um, this else block here and now we have to access this structure because now we can can be sure that this structure is localized in our result dictionary so as I told you there is actually a, this complete thing here is a dictionary 
which has some keys like page, pages, per page, photo. And we are interested in this photo key, which again, holds a dictionary for us. Um, so let's create one dictionary, which is going to be, um, let's just do this in one, uh, in one line, um, creating a result array, which is going to be an ns array. And we will now say result dictionary object for key. The first key is photos. And after that, we will just say again, object for key photo. And then we will get everything within this as an array. So as and as array. Let's build that, that succeeded. Um, and now we can create our first uh, Flickr photo object. So let's say um, uh, Flickr photo, uh, Flickr photos, which we will have to uh, get from. We will we will uh, create an NS mutable array here at that point, mutable array, Flickr photos, which we will then pass to our um, to our completion closure. Um, Let's just initialize it and it's mutable array. And we're now you are going to use uh, we're now using a for loop um, saying a photo object in result array. Um, and define f um, a um, flicker photo object for every um, uh, for every object that is um, that is in our result and that is included in our result array. So um, let's create a dictionary because um, we have, again, every object in our, um, in our result array is again a dictionary with some keys and values. Um, so let's create a photo dictionary and as a dictionary and um, put in the photo object as NS dictionary because you this always needs to be um, an any object object so uh, we have to cast this within the for loop um, and now we can finally create our Flickr photo by saying uh, var Flickr photo um, which is going to be a Flickr photo and initialize it, Flickr photo. And now we can just set all the properties that we need. So the first one is uh, Flickr photo dot farm. And this is going to be um, photo de uh, photo. Yeah. Uh, no, photo dict dot object for key farm. And this we um, the farm we have to find as an integer so let's um, use integer here and now let me just copy that four times um so the next one is the server which we define as string um what else have we got we have the secret which will also define a string. And uh, we had the photo ID also a string. So now we have, um, we have populated our Flickr photo object with all the necessary data. And what we do now is create another search URL, which is going to be a string. And what we will now use is our Flickr helper class, uh, which we call URL for a Flickr photo. And now we do have a Flickr photo. And let's just use M for medium size. And if we now check back on this um, URL for Flickr photo, you now can understand that what we did here, we have created a string with a specific URL which is this, and we put into this URL all the necessary data for Flickr to identify um, the correct photo. So 
um, we do have this URL now. And what we have to do now is download the data that we get from this URL. So actually download the image. How do we do that? Uh, we'll first, we will have to create an NS data object for the image data. NS data equals NS data um, with contents of a URL, contents of URL. Um, again, with um, options and error. Um, and we will now pass to this uh, to this initializer the search URL, the search URL, not search string, the search URL, as well as um, no options and again our address of our error object. All right, um, and then we can create contents of URL. Ah, we have to convert this search. Um, search URL because it's a string we have to convert it to a URL so let's say um, URL URL with string search URL just delete that all right um, and now we can create an image which is a UI image equals um, a UI image initializer um, which is going to be initialized with a data object, which we've got here. So let's uh, say image data. And now we have the we have the image data and the UI image ready to put it into our Flickr photo. And because we have downloaded the medium size photo, we will put it into the thumbnail. And just say the thumbnail is going to be the image. And now we can use our array that we have defined here with Flickr photos and add an object of Flickr photo. And this all happens in our for loop. So for every result here, we're going to set one Flickr, uh, Flickr photo with all the necessary properties and then finally put in the um, downloaded image. And all of that happens, as I told you early, uh, earlier, asynchronously. So after all of that stuff happened, we can finally call after. So actually, after this for loop, we can finally call again our completion handler and again put in the search string that we got in the first place. And now we have a, um, a NS mutable array ready to pass um, to this completion, uh, to this completion closure and just say flicker photos. And again, uh, and this time we have no error because everything worked out nicely. Well, that's it actually for this uh, for this helper class. And if all went well, we can um, we can just check by um, by doing a little test run. So let's do that within uh, view did load in our one and only view controller in this app. Um, by first creating um, one of our Flickr helper class uh, objects, Flickr helper, um, initialize it with Flickr helper. And now we can just access our Flickr object and search Flickr for a string. Um, and let's just say we're searching for world. And now just we can just um, hit enter and there's our completion block. And I have misspelled um, Flickr, obviously. Uh, so let's go back, um, remove the E, Flickr photos, um, go back to, go back here. Let's just do that again. Build Flickr um, search for string, again, world, and the completion block. And there we can write our code. So. Um, let's first um, try this. Build failed. Why that? All right, because I haven't corrected it here. So let's just do that. Replace, and the last time replace this. <clears throat> Okay, let's again build it. Okay, run. And there's the firewall. And we have a crash. 
So um, let's debug this together. Um, where to find out where the error actually is. We don't if we, if we run this again, you see that um, we don't really get a hint of where our error might occur. We have no uh, console output. We just get um, this exact breakpoint in thread three, and this is not really helpful. So, what you can do at this at this point is using breakpoints. So, um, let's say um, we. The only thing where something really terrible could went wrong, uh, could go wrong, is with our, our search flicker for string function because that's the only thing that we call. Um, so let's put by just clicking here, put a breakpoint within this um, this patch asynchronously uh, block here, and let's rerun our app. So and by uh, stepping through the app using the step over button, we can just go. Uh, line by line through our code and see if everything works. All right, still looking good. Going a little more down. And there was the crash. So something is wrong here. Oh, and obviously, if we take a look at that, then we see that um, I did not put in the correct keys here because I just copied them. So we will replace that. Um, with the correct keys and say um, flicker um, flicker photo secret this is a secret secret and let's have a quick look at this it's just called ID so put an ID here um, and now we know that the error occurred here so let's just see if um, if this still occurs this error so we stop here step over again Looking good. Image data. So we're calling it. All right. This looks good too. And if we now have a look at this, uh, at, at this constant here, this image constant, we can do this here. And see, there is an image. And if we press this um, at, the, at this quick look eye, we can actually see the image already. So we have down successfully downloaded an image. And if we were to place um, the photo dictionary here using a print line photo dict then we can we could actually see what takes so long here let's uh, just rerun this and if we have a look at the console output you see it just runs through here and sometime at any time it will be completed so and now let's see if the of our completion block works by placing um a breakpoint within our completion block here, our completion closure. And let's allow this. You see it runs and runs and runs and runs and runs. And if it's finished, boom, um, we, are, uh, we are entering our uh, completion closure here. So now within this closure, we can actually do all the funny stuff. Um, let me just complete that here with a string so that we know what kind of data types we're working with this is an mutable array and this was an error and it's error um, so now let's just try again um, to um, to get our image to display using the um, using this debugging feature um, <clears throat> first let's create a flicker photo object which is a flick Flickr photo equals Flickr photos. Now uh, we're using the uh, mutable array that we got from our completion closure. And let's say object at index zero. Um, and let's cast this to a Flickr photo. And now we could create a image, UI image and say Flickr photo dot thumbnail. All right. And if we were to place a breakpoint here again and build this, then we should see the one image here. And let's have a look. And there is another strange image that has to do something with the keyword world. All right. Now that we have seen that our um, that our class, our Flickr helper class, actually works, and after we have debugged 
um, our code, we can uh, go ahead and create the user interface uh, for this app. Um, and for the sake of simplicity, let's click on the view controller and go to the show the file inspector pane and um, just deselect use auto layout so and disable this uh, uh, and disable the size class so that we get a standard um, uh, iPhone 5 um, sized view controller. And the first thing we will need is a UI image view that we will just place right into here. Reduce it in size a little. Let's just put that at the bottom here. Uh, what we are also going to need is a text field, which we'll just place here, a little bigger. Give it some placeholder text that the user knows what to do. Um, enter search term, and also giving the user a button. search for image. All right. Um, and what we also need is a cool header for our app. So I have already prepared a little icon here and that you will find in the um, in the video's description. And this is actually high, um, high, uh, high resolution. So you could uh, use the images assets and just um, place just drag it in and um, put it to the uh, 2x version and go back to the storyboard <clears throat> and we will use another image view put it here I'm going to have size of 64 by 64 put it here and let's select our flicker image and let's also use a label for the title it's called cool flicker search Let's make that a little bigger, bold. All right. <clears throat> and what we also need is a activity uh, indicator that we will just place right here for a moment. And let's say it's large and white. And we can now put it here at the top of our Flickr icon and we'll um, uh, we will later uh, just put a black background color uh, beneath the icon um, so that we can see the um, indicator um, when it's animating. So uh, actually we can also check this hides when stopped um, behavior here so that if it does not spin that um, then it's going to be hidden. Um, and now we will add the add some outlets here. Um, so let's start with our image view. Activating the assistant editor, press control, drag over to the code, and let's say this is the Flickr image view. Then we're going to have a search for image button. So let's add an action, call it search for image. Uh, we've got this text field here. Also create an outlet for that. Um, search text field. Let's do that again. Search text field connect. Uh, we have this um, uh, we have this flicker icon. So let's say a flicker icon. Um, let's just call it flicker icon image view. And we have the activity indicator. Let's just call this one activity. Cool. Now we have completed our user interface. Um, we could um, actually now remove all that logic from the uh, view to load and do um, um, and do nothing anymore and view it load because we can everything that needs to be net done now it can be placed in the search for image um, function which is triggered when we when the user touches the search for image button uh, but we what we could do is actually give this a black color fits in or because flicker is um, some somewhere in the icon there is a red so 
Let's make this one red. All right. Um, and we have what we have to do now is actually um, do some uh, some, some adjustments, um, like when we uh, when we run the app and the user clicks into this uh, into this text field, um, then uh, we have to res and we we click the search for image button. Um, we have to resign the keyboard. So uh, let's say search uh, search text field dot resign first responder. Um, what we also need to do as soon as you click on the search for image button, we are going to start download asynchronously, but it's going to start. Um, so we'll turn the image view black. So let's say uh, flicker icon image view dot background color equals UI color black color. So it's going to be black and now we can access our activity indicator and say start animating. And now this is actually all we need to do um, in our um, to to set up the UI. Now we um, should check um, after we have created our, our Flickr helper. We should check if the user has entered something into the text field. So let's say search text field dot um, text. If this is um, if this is empty. Let's create a little um, uh, alert controller. So let's say alert UI alert controller equals UI alert controller. And let me go back to the um, to the code view here. Um, UI alert controller, and it with title uh, oops message please enter a search term. UI alert controller style this is going to be alert, not action sheet. And we also need to add an action UI alert action title. Um, just okay. And this is UI alert action style default. Nothing special. We don't need an, uh, any handler, any any block here, any closure here. So else. So if this, if the user entered something, we can again cut this piece of code and paste it here. Um, and now we can do this um, in a clean way as well. So we can check if there is no error. Let's access um, our Flickr photo, put it into um, a UI image object. And now because the user interface runs on the main thread we have to use this patch as, uh, asynchronously again and um, use the main thread again, the, the main queue now. So this patch get main queue so that we are on the main thread again. And all we need to do now is opening this closure and say self flicker image view dot image is going to be our image. I'm using self because we are within a closure now. And also activity, we can stop animating now, stop animating, and flicker um, icon image view dot background color, again, has to be um, UI color, clear color so that we can see the icon properly. And if we check now, everything should work pretty Pretty fine. Um, so let's search for Apple Store. Search keyboard um, resigns. It's downloading activity indicate what has what's, what has got what has this image to do with Apple Store? I, I don't get it. Um, and as you can see, sometimes um, the images are repeating themselves, um, which is not that cool. Well, let's try flower. And it seems that we are always getting the same images. And I see why because we, we forgot 
to change the search string. It's always just world. So um, <clears throat> what we obviously have to place in here is the uh, search text field dot text property so that um, uh, we are searching for, for the user entry. So let's again use Apple Store search for image. And there we go. Uh, there we go. A nice image of an Apple Store. Um, and you see that these images are repeating themselves and we don't get random results all the time. So um, let's uh, let's let's force it to give us some random results by um, uh, by changing this object at index not to zero but to a random number between zero and the count of our um, Flickr photos array. Um, so let's say Flickr. Um, no, uh, let's say we use the arc for random underscore uniform. Um, function to get a random number and what we need to do now you see we uh, it's it requires a u integer 32 what we get if we count here when we count the number of um, elements in our array we uh, we will get an integer so let's cast that to u and 32 Um, and say flicker photos dot count, but the object at index um, function requires an integer. So let's cast that back to an integer. Integer. And that there is something missing. Um, Probably, yes, just a missing parentheses. So now let's run this again. Enter a search term like Apple Store, search for image. And we get this one, another image, another image. Cool. And let's try, let's say, um, street and there we go so what we have what we have done in this tutorial was creating a Flickr helper class which used a completion closure um, which we then used in our view controller to see and check when all the images that need to be um, need to be available for our user interface um, to access them after all of the images have been downloaded. You could restrict this um, to just one image by changing the API call. Um, per page number to just one and actually you could now let's say apple store again and if we would do this again you see that we only get one result so actually the more uh, the more per page um, property you set here the higher the number is the more images you get and the longer it takes actually that's let's do a quick experiment here put it to a hundred and let's see um what the memory does um again apple store search allow allow and you see how the memory increases slowly and how it runs through here and we still don't uh, don't get the hundred images from from the uh, from the service but now um, you see it's completed and now we have got 100 results here and if you would do that kind of stuff in uh, on the main thread it would totally freeze your app so it's always a good idea to um, to do heavy operations um, uh, within a background thread um, like we did here so have fun um, creating this app and using using Flickr uh, maybe you come up with a great idea using the Flickr API um, 
So if you have questions, don't be shy, just ask in the comments below. And um, in the next tutorial, as I told you, we're going to use a um, UI collection view to display um, to display a lot more of those uh, 20 images. Um, so let me just put 20 here back again. Um, we will uh, display them in a cool fashion using a collection view. So that's it for today. Um, have fun. Goodbye.